You've made your intention. You're proceeding now to the haram. The talbiya, labbayk Allahumma labbayk, labbayk la sharika laka, labbayk inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. The talbiya is now sunnah all the way until you reach the haram. All the way until you get to the haram. All right? Now, it is the best form of dhikr in this state. And subhanAllah, like what, what ends up happening is that when people first start in Medina, they get to the miqat in Medina, then everyone's saying the bake Allahumma la bake for like three, five minutes. And then within three to five minutes, then everybody's snoring in their different languages too, right? So you just hear here and people are talking and having conversations. And every once in a while, everybody say la bake Allahumma la bake. And everyone gets excited once again. Try to keep yourself engaged with the talbiyah inshaAllah ta'ala. Um, as much as you can. It is the best form of dhikr in this state. Um, for, for men, it's sunnah to do it loudly, to encourage everybody around you to, to join in the talbiyah as well. For women, it's encouraged to do it in a lower voice. Um, it's not sunnah to do it with a leader, you know, as a group. So what that means is that you'll see a lot of people going throughout Umrah and Hajj where one person is going, لَبَّيْكَ Allahumma لَبَّيْكَ and everybody says, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ And he goes, لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ And they all say that. That's an innovation. That's not sunnah. So don't join in on that. Don't be a part of that. Just do it yourself, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, throughout the process. Now you get to tawaf al-qudum. The first tawaf. The, ent- you know, the, the tawaf of entrance um, into, uh, into the city. As you reach to the haram, <coughs> for the first time, wudu is required for tawaf according to the strongest opinion. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that tawaf is like salah. Okay, it's a form of prayer. So wudu is required for your tawaf. Now, is it okay when, I, when, I, when I've done my, you know, from the miqat, I put on my ihram to not go do tawaf right away, to not go actually do my umrah right away? Is it okay for me to take some time to rest in you know, in the hotel, if I have a hotel, whatever it may be, to take a few hours and then go do it? Yes, it is. There is nothing that says that you have to go from the miqat straight to do umrah. However, you'll simply have to observe your ihram throughout that process while you're waiting. All right, so you can go to your, your, your hotel, you can go to Aziziyah, wherever it may be. You can take your time to actually go out and do the tawaf at a time that's good for you. But when you do, inshallah ta'ala, you should have your wudu. For the brothers, they will expose their right shoulder. This is only for this tawaf al-qudum, the opening tawaf, where the brothers will expose their right shoulder. Um, and this will end as soon as you finish tawaf. Not after three circuits, <coughs> but after you finish your tawaf, you will actually cover your right shoulder. Okay, so you expose your right shoulder. You enter the haram through any one of the gates and you look for the green light to start. Where is the green light? The green light is where, basically, it it marks where the black stone is because your tawaf is going to start um, from from where the black stone is. So you'll actually see in the different stories of the haram in different locations, you'll see that the green light is marking the beginning of the black stone. Now enter through any gate, inshaAllah ta'ala, you enter into the masjid with your right foot, and here you have the du'a. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Allahumma khfir li dhunubi, waftah li abwaab rahmatik, a'udhu billahi al-azim, wa bi wajhi al-kareem, wa bi sultanihi al-qadeem, min ash-shaytan al-rajeem. So you would enter with this du'a, inshaAllah ta'ala. You would start right away with your tawaf. Now, do you have to pray the two rak'ahs of entering into the masjid? No, because your tawaf replaces those two rak'ahs. Outside of Umrah or Hajj or one of those mandatory, you know, one of those, uh, the, those, those tawafs, if a person goes to the haram, they have the choice. They could either, they could either do tawaf or they could pray two rakahs. Okay, like any masjid. All right. But here in this situation, you're replacing the two rakahs of entering into the masjid. You will uh, go straight to your tawaf. You align yourself with the black stone. Okay, that's the beginning of the tawaf, so with that green light. 
you would signal toward it with your hand, you would simply say Allahu Akbar. If you cannot kiss it or touch it, which is not something that's really easy to do in the time of Hajj, and it's not good for a person to fight over it, there's nothing there is nothing super special about doing that, right? There is nothing sunnah about fighting over it. And a lot of people go way overboard because of it. And some people, it's like having bragging rights. Like, I got to kiss the black stone. Like, I just fought and elbowed people and moved, you know, fought my way through so I could kiss the black stone. It's not something to do in Hajj, seriously. If you find the opportunity, you go at a good time to do Umrah and Hajj, and you don't have to fight your way through or elbow and things of that sort, then that's the sunnah. But the Prophet also taught to just signal towards it simply and to say Allahu Akbar and to proceed with the tawaf and the Kaaba is on your left side. Don't do tawaf the opposite direction. All right, make sure that you're going counterclockwise. The Kaaba is on your left side. Now for the, for the men, the sunnah is to do the first three circuits of tawaf faster. It's impractical to try to run don't harm people, but there is, an, there is an added pace in the first three circuits of the tawaf. You will keep your shoulder exposed throughout all seven. And the seven circuits should not be interrupted. That doesn't mean you can't take a break. Like you can't sit on the side if it's getting too exhausting. <coughs> but that does mean, sorry about that. That does mean that you shouldn't leave and come back. You can't leave and come back or interrupt your tawaf. So you could take a break while you're doing tawaf, but you can't interrupt your tawaf by actually leaving your tawaf. If a person interrupts the seven circuits of tawaf, what do they do? Let's say that you have to leave. When you come back, do you pick up from where you left off or do you start over? Because tawaf is like salah, then it's like starting over. So you would start over. Okay, now if, it's, if there's a hardship involved or if a person needs to use the restroom frequently or there's urinary incontinence, whatever it may be, there's hardship involved. It's difficult for you to maintain wudu, for example, throughout all seven. Then you pick up where you left off, inshallah ta'ala, and there's no problem. But ideally what you want to do uh, is that if you don't have that need, then you should start off uh, from where you left off. Believe it or not, number 12 here, if you doubt how many circuits you've completed, all right, a lot of times you think it's simple, it's seven circuits, but you might get confused and you will second guess yourself and you'll start to doubt. And it is healthy to have someone with you or to, you know, to count with somebody as you're going through. But if you have a doubt, what do you do? Just like the Prophet said about prayer, then build on that which you're certain about. So if you don't know if it's the fourth one or the fifth one, you will assume that it's what? The fourth one, all right? And it's good to have you know, one, one person with you or two people with you and you're counting uh, together. If you cannot, if you, you know, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is to touch Ar-Rukn al-Yamani, the Yemeni corner, which is the corner right before the, ka- before the black stone. If you can't touch it, then you don't signal towards it. A lot of people will be signaling towards it. Why did the Prophet ﷺ used to touch Ar-Rukn al-Yamani, the Yemeni corner, and then he would touch the black stone? The Prophet ﷺ actually, you know, uh, used to touch it because it's one of the original foundations of the Kaaba. The Kaaba was built by Ibrahim ﷺ in a rectangular shape. Okay, it was actually rectangular. So there was the Yemeni corner, there was the black stone, and where you see Hijr Ismail, you see that semicircle. Those corners of that that actually used to be part of the Kaaba. So the Prophet ﷺ would touch a Rukn al-Yamani as he passed by it because it was one of the original foundations. He wouldn't kiss it, he wouldn't do anything special with it, he would simply touch it as he was walking around. If you're there, touch it, otherwise you don't have to sit there and give it the peace sign and, and you know, start to, start to signal towards it or anything of that sort. The Sunnah Dua, generally speaking in Tawaf, it's open for you. Make Dua in any way that you can, any Duas that you can. And it's good to plan them out. If you wanna have one circuit for your family, or two circuits for your family, whatever it is, one circuit for this, one circuit for that, to have it planned out, inshallah ta'ala, because it's very hectic and it's not, it's not, you know, the, the dua that you do in tawaf, the nature of the dua that you do in tawaf, it's not like this dua where you're, you know, nice and calm and you have this time to, it's loud, it's, it's, it's crazy, it's hectic. So it's good to have in your mind what you're going to do with each circuit, inshallah ta'ala, and to dedicate each circuit. 
But the Sunnah Dua between Ar-Rukn al-Yamani, between the Yemeni corner and between the black stone is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. This is the Dua that the Prophet Sallallahu would repeat between Ar-Rukn al-Yamani and the black stone. Other than that, there is no prescribed Dua for Tawaf. All the du'as are open. Make du'a as an individual. You don't have to join in with a group. You don't have to hold a book. Continue to make du'a uh, for yourself. When you complete your seventh circuit, you will go all the way to Maqam Ibrahim. It's just slightly past the black stone. Again, you'll align yourself with it. So you don't actually have to go to Maqam Ibrahim, but you'll keep walking until you pass it, which is just slightly beyond uh, the black stone. Then you will place it. It between yourself and the Kaaba, and you would cover your shoulder and you would recite, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى uh, the, the ayah in the Quran, and take the station of Ibrahim السلام, as a place of prayer. You pray two rak'ahs, reciting silently. The sunnah is to recite Surah Al Kafirun in the first rak'ah, Surah Al Ikhlas in the second rak'ah, just like the sunnah of Fajr. Okay? And then you know, and, and then you would proceed to the rest of it, okay? So you'd proceed to, to drink your zamzam and you'd proceed to the sa'i. Now again, the idea here is you go and you complete your seven. On the seventh circuit, you move beyond Maqam Ibrahim. There is no way to perfectly align yourself. And if it's crowded, you can pray anywhere in the masjid after you pass Maqam Ibrahim. Okay, so there's no way to perfectly align yourself. But the point is you say, وَاتَّخِذُ مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى You would recite that. You would pray your two rak'ahs, and then inshallah ta'ala you go into your sa'i. Uh, so for now we're actually going to go ahead and break for Salatul Isha.